Here's another example we can try drawing a picture for. Again, I can draw perpendiculars coming from the center of the spherical mirror out to touch the mirror at various places and draw light rays. And once again, if I have an incident angle like so, I should have a reflected angle like so. And the light ray should come somewhat like this. And if I have an incident angle like so, I should have a reflected angle like so. And the right, right ray should come like this. And there is an apparent intersection. So the image looks like it's again inverted. And my flower looks like it's upside down. But notice that the image um, is in front of the mirror. And it's upside down. It's smaller than the actual object in this case. The object is quite tall, and the image is quite small. So we'll see, in general, three, three properties change. The location of the image, the size, and whether or not it's inverted or upright. I guess we could call that the orientation. So as we work more examples, again, uh, doing a little bit of arithmetic, We'll want to keep track of those particular properties, what changes about the image with respect to uh, the real object. And we'll want to keep, um, we'll want to have an ability uh, to m make calculations that allow us to, to calculate what we predict for those particular properties. I've just been sketching examples here, but in the future we'll work through a set of equations that allow us to predict this mathematically. As we move forward, and start to do some of those calculations, it will be important to develop another concept of a mirror, and that's called its focal point. The focal point, much like the, the word suggests, is where light tends to be focused to. And for a curved mirror, it's defined as where does the light converge to if you have parallel light rays heading into the mirror. By parallel, I mean a series of light rays all traveling in the same direction. Here's my curved mirror. And if I just draw these perpendiculars here from the center of the mirror, oops, excuse me, uh, this light ray is if re reflecting at the same angle as its incident and so on with all the others. All these light rays appear to converge right there. This is called the focal point. The focal point is where light rays appear to converge to. For a concave mirror like this one, the focal point will always be on the left-hand side of the mirror like I've drawn it. For a convex mirror, light rays actually never reach the focal point. Parallel rays coming in reflect out at different angles, and our mind never would actually see all those light rays come in from a certain point. However, we would perceive that they came from a common point. They would come from a common point back behind the mirror. So all these light rays never approach one another as they leave the mirror, but if we, our mind extrapolates them back stupidly, as we always happen, have them happen to do, um, they appear to come back from a point behind the mirror. And this is called the focal point for this kind of mirror, the convex mirror. Light rays never actually reach the focal point of a convex mirror, but they appear to for that parallel light rays. So as we go forward, and we will work with uh, mathematical examples of how to calculate images and orientations and locations of images from curved mirrors, it's important to keep in mind this idea of a focal point. Uh, it's a fictitious point, or it's a real point. Uh, depending on where, uh, what kind of mirror we're talking about. And it's either in front of or behind the mirror, depending on what kind of mirror we're talking about. And it depends on how curved the mirror is. So if this dimension right here represents the radius of curvature r for the mirror, it's always true that the focal length is equal to r over 2. It's half the radius of curvature. That's also correct for the other kind of mirror, the concave mirror. If this is the radius of curvature right here, r, then the focal length, how far in front of the mirror this focal point is, is again f, which is going to equal r over 2. Another important point to think about the focal point is it's the, light ray, it's the place where light rays will converge to if they're coming in parallel. And it's also the, um, the place that if I put an object and shine light from there, they will come out in par uh, parallel from that common point. So if I put a little light bulb right there, 
in front of a curved mirror, and the light bulb was sending rays in the opposite direction out like so. They would reflect out that way, out like so. They would reflect out that way. This would be a great way to make a, a beam of light, like a, for a, a lighthouse, as you put a curved mirror in front of a light bulb. And now you can make a little tractor beam or a light beam uh, that projects out in different directions. So we can think of the focal point as the place where light will collect to if it's coming in parallel. Or we can think of it as the location, if I put a point source of light, it will send out parallel beams from that location. And with that, we'll be able to do uh, quite a few mathematical calculations that allow us to predict the sizes and the orientations and the locations of images from curved mirrors.